welcome to today's webinar. Today is Intro to Instagram. Uh, Rebecca Van Dusen will be our instructor, um, and I will introduce her in just a moment. First, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Susan Winkler, our technology librarian here at the Champaign Public Library, and I want to welcome you to today's webinar. Uh, a few housekeeping things for Zoom, um, in case it's your first time or you need a refresher. Uh, you should have some controls down at the bottom of your screen. There's a chat bubble. And we do ask that you go ahead and put questions in that chat bubble if you'd like. And I will be behind the scenes answering questions or I'll pose them out loud to Rebecca so that she can answer them. Uh, we do ask you to use that too. If you wanna see something demoed a second time, please just go ahead and put it in there. And then I will ask her to do something a second time or third or fourth, however many times we need. Um, and we want you to put those questions in the chat whenever you have them. You don't have to wait to the end to ask questions. Um, we wanna make sure everything uh, has a nice flow to it and that whatever questions you have are answered when you have them. Um, so please feel free to put those in there, interrupt us, stop us. That's exactly what we want. Um, if you prefer to speak your question, we will have time where if you can use the other icon down there that you see, which is a raise hand button, it looks just like a hand. Uh, I do suggest you use that if you'd like to speak your question. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll unmute you so that you can ask your question out loud. I know sometimes it's easier to ask a question verbally than to have to type it. Uh, so we do have that option as well. Just feel free to use that raised hand button. Um, we are recording today's webinar and we will have uh, a handout that we will use today. And I'll post that in the chat in just a moment. And if you're interested, we will be sending a digital copy of that handout along with a link to a YouTube video of today's recording, of today's webinar. Um, and we do have a whole playlist up there on our YouTube channel with uh, previous tech workshops uh, that are also up there too for your enjoyment. And you can also do that today if you'd like to watch today and then go back and re-watch the webinar on YouTube, you can play and follow along with your phone too, if you'd like. Um, so if you want to just sit back and absorb today and watch, that's totally okay. Um, or if you want to participate by getting your own phone out and, and jumping right in, that's okay too. It's totally up to you. Uh, we do also have live transcriptions enabled. Um, so if you see a little CC button in a little box down at the bottom, if you're having trouble hearing us, um, or you like to see the text of what we're saying, um, you can hit live transcription, and then you should be able to see what we're saying uh, down along the bottom in text. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Let me double check real quick. Yes, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce Rebecca. Uh, so Rebecca Van Dusen is a library associate here at the Champaign Public Library, and you may have seen her uh, assisting with the tech workshops and teaching them before, and also at the information desk. Um, here at the library. So Rebecca, I'll go ahead and let you take over. All right, thanks Susan. Thank okay. you. So um, we're going to be demonstrating a lot as Susan said on the iPad today. Um, now of course you can get Instagram on really any smartphone or tablet. Um, we're gonna be doing it on an iPad, but of course if you have an Android tablet, you can even access Instagram on a computer. We're going to talk more about that in a second. But let me go ahead and share my PowerPoint presentation, and we can dive right in. All right. Let me know if you can see my PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I can. OK, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in and go over what we're going to talk about today. So our agenda today. So what is Instagram? We're going to be talking about what it's all about, how to use it, some of the basics. We're going to be talking about how to navigate Instagram, how to move throughout the app. We're going to be talking about the feed, how to like and comment, how to create a new post. We're going to talk about things called stories and reels, which are kind of newer Instagram features. We'll talk about searching, hashtags, your profile page, how to follow people and what that means. We'll talk about notifications as well. We'll also talk about blocking, muting, and restricting other Instagram users. You've probably heard about some of those before. We'll also go over some settings and then terms and phrases. I do want to say that Instagram is a very vast and detailed app, so we're going to sort of dip our toe in most of these, but we're not going to cover every little thing on Instagram just because it would be impossible to do that in a two-hour time period. Um, but if you do have a more detailed question, of course, feel free to ask that. 
Um, but for the most part, we're just going to kind of be covering the basics. That's why it's more of an intro class. All right. So what is Instagram? I do have a little picture here on this slide of what the app looks like. So if you have the app on your phone or your tablet, it should look something like that little icon up in the top right corner. Instagram is basically an online social media platform. So it's sort of similar to something like Facebook or Twitter. It's basically like a social networking site. Um, it's an application as well. Uh, and it allows registered users to share posts. So to sign up, you're gonna have to have an email address. I believe it might also ask you for a phone. I think you can either sign up for a with your phone number or with an email address. But for sure, I know that you'll have to have either one of those. Um, with Instagram, your posts are going to mostly consist of photos and videos. There's also some text components that come into play, especially if you're writing, like, say, captions or something on your picture or in the description. That's going to involve text. But for the most part, Instagram is totally visual. Um, it's going to allow you to connect to friends so you can see the content that they share. Um, you can also connect to celebrities, companies, stuff like that, other organizations, groups, and what is called social media influencers. You've probably heard of those kind of people before. Those are the people that make their living on social media websites like Instagram or TikTok. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that. Not too much, though. We're also going to um, go in a little bit into the messaging component. So you can message users on Instagram with something called a direct message. So Instagram is also mostly designed for your smartphone or tablet. You can access Instagram on a desktop computer, but your features are going to be limited. So keep that in mind. It's mostly going to be on your phone or tablet. All right. Any questions so far before we get started? We're going to do demos as well. I do want to remind everyone, too, that if you do have a question, um, you can either post it in the chat or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you if you have questions. Yes. Looks like, looks like no questions so far. All right. So the creation of your Instagram accounts, basically what you're going to do is you're going to download the Instagram app from your App Store or your Google Play Store if you're on Android. Wherever you get your apps, you're going to search for that Instagram app and download it. Um, you can also visit Instagram.com and sign up on a computer. Uh, it should look kind of like that little image there I have on the slide. It might look slightly different depending on what format you're using to log into Instagram. And it's going to have you, again, it's going to put either your phone number or your email to sign up. And you're going to create a username. So that's something that's completely original to you and that you make up. Um, and of course, you're going to create a password, just like with any account, like with Facebook or Twitter or even your library account is going to ask you to create a password. Um, then you're going to tap on sign up. It may send you an email confirmation just to confirm that it's you creating an account. And then you should be able to jump right into Instagram. Um, let me just make sure. Yep, that's everything for that slide. Any questions so far about signing up? Yes, we do have our first question. Uh, does it matter if you sign up with Facebook or with the phone or email? Um, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. It's just up to you whether you want to do that because you'll see that login with Facebook button. Um, Instagram is actually owned by Facebook. So a lot of the stuff crosses over, especially with logging in and some of your credentials. So if you want to log in with your Facebook credentials, you can. Um, you don't have to, though. I didn't sign up that way, but some people do. It just depends on if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, you may have noticed yesterday that Facebook and Instagram were down um, because they're both the same company. So, you know, if one goes down, the other will go down. Yeah. I will also say that uh, in some cases, it, it does come down to personal preference. Uh, as far as security concerns and um, issues with things like sharing accounts across devices. Um, most folks um, that are sort of tech uh, industry folks would say signing up with a separate 
stuff is usually good because even though they're shared by the same company, um, you know, it's, it's kind of best, a best practice to keep your accounts separate and your passwords separate for things. Um, but again, it is a, it, as Rebecca said, it is a personal choice. Um, our other question, Rebecca, which kind of is related to that is, are you going to co- cover security and how to keep our information from public view and or being hacked? We will dive in a little bit to security stuff and privacy stuff for sure. Um, the hacking part, maybe you have a more specific question about hacking, but we can also dive into that part of your question as well if you want to get more specific for sure. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So let's actually dive into navigating. So um, I'm going to switch to the demonstration portion. All of the slides that you'll get with the handout that comes later will go over these demonstration portions so that you won't miss it when you're at home going over this again. So let me go ahead and switch, stop my share here and switch my video so you can see what I'm seeing here. All right, let me adjust that a little bit. All right, so you should hopefully be seeing um, my iPad there. Ooh, um, give me just a second. Let me turn off my light here as well. Uh, my s- screen is having some trouble. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it back up at all. Interesting. If anybody wants to write in the chat, if they can see my iPad as well, just so I can make sure if that's going out to everybody as well. Yeah. Um, Rebecca, my screen has frozen. Oh, no. So I think we may have been, you may have muted yourself, Susan. Okay. Okay. I have someone saying in chat that they can see. think you're muted as well, Susan, if you're trying to talk. Okay, I, I suppose I can just go ahead and jump in. Um, you may be experiencing technical difficulties on your side, Susan, but I'll just go ahead and get started um, on my side. All right. So for me, I have an iPad. So your screen may look slightly different than mine, depending on what sort of device you're on. But for us, um, my Instagram app is right there on my front screen. Um, Now, again, yours may be on a different screen or may be positioned differently, but mine is right there. And to open the Instagram app, all you got to do is just tap on it and it's going to open up Instagram. And then we're going to talk about how to navigate from this screen here. Because the first screen you're going to be finding yourself at is the home screen. So if you look in the bottom left corner here where I'm pointing, you'll see kind of a little home icon. That's our home screen there. And that's going to be where you're going to see your feeds. We're going to also talk about feeds a little bit. Let me lower the brightness on this and see if that, let me see here, see if that looks a little better here. Um, what do one up? All right. Hopefully that looks a little better. Not so much blown out with that white in the background. But yes, let's talk about all of the icons we're seeing here before we start talking about the feed. So at the bottom is sort of where we can navigate to different areas on Instagram. So again, right now we're on our home screen, but you can also search on Instagram by tapping this little magnifying glass. And we're going to dive more into all of these as well but I'm just gonna touch on them so you know what these icons are before we dive in. So we can do our searching from the uh, little magnifying glass here. And that's sort of a universal symbol. You've probably seen that in different apps or on the internet as well. That magnifying glass is gonna be your ability to do a search. We also have a little app that kind of looks like one of those little like clappers, like a you know you see in the movies where they go action and they clap it. That is what Instagram is calling Reels. That's R-E-E-L-S. 
So the reels are a new sort of feature on Instagram, and it's going to allow you to discover short videos by other Instagram users. So Instagram is sort of tr in a transitory kind of area right now because Instagram is mostly still pictures, but they're sort of transitioning into videos as well. Because of TikTok, I think they're being influenced to go that way. You'll also see a little shopping bag here. That's going to be the shopping page on Instagram. So with Instagram, you can actually buy things right in the app. We're going to talk slightly um, about how to do that. Not too much, but you can buy things by going into that little shopping page. We'll go to that in a second. And the very right, you'll see your profile icon. So for us, it's going to look like our profile picture. We'll talk about how to change your profile picture as well. But you're going to have that profile icon. So yours is going to look like your profile. All right. And then up at the top right, we're going to see some stuff as well. We're going to see a plus icon, a heart icon, and a little word bubble icon. So those are going to be the plus icon is going to be your creation icon. So you can create a new post, a new story a live video, or a reel, and we're going to talk about all of those as well. Your heart icon is going to go to your activity page. So that's the page where you're going to be able to see notifications. You're going to be able to see people that have um, maybe commented on your picture or liked your picture. Um, it might also show you suggestions that Instagram has, like, for instance, maybe people you want to follow, stuff like that, maybe friends that you know. And then our word bubble icon is going to be our direct messages. So Instagram has the ability to um, have these sort of private messages that you can send. Now, again, with the internet, not everything is going to be private. So keep that in mind. It's not totally private. Oop, let me go back here. I accidentally tapped on that. Um, we're going to talk more about direct messages as well. But that's how you get to that is just tapping on that little word bubble there. Let's talk more about your feed. So your feed, again, is going to be from your homepage, which we're on right now. And your feed is going to show content that you and people you follow post to Instagram. So from here, you can like, comment, you can save posts, or you can send a direct message to an Instagram user. You might also see ads in your feed as well as suggested accounts. Um, so keep that in mind as you're scrolling through, and that's how you kind of navigate through your feed. You might see ads. So it looks like we do have an ad right here from Shutterfly, and you'll see ads will say sponsored, and it may encourage you to shop now or buy something because, of course, they're trying to sell something. And as we scroll through, we'll see those different accounts we're following. Their posts are going to show up here in our feed. So I'm just scrolling through. You'll see hashtags you'll follow as well. We'll talk about hashtags. Um, let's see if we can see any suggested users here. We follow like a lot of libraries. I follow National Geographic, Food Network. I don't see any suggestions, but you may see suggested. Here we go. So suggested reels. So that's reels that Instagram thinks you may enjoy. Of course, there's kitties and puppies. I enjoy kitties and puppies. Um, so yeah, that's what you're going to see as you scroll through your feed. And of course, you can scroll up and down. If you scroll back up to the top, um, you'll get back up to the top of your feed. Now, your feed might not also necessarily be chronological. Um, it's up to Instagram's algorithm and what they want you to see. So you may see stuff from three minutes ago. Or you may see stuff from one day ago, just depending on how often the people post or what Instagram has for your feed in terms of what they're spitting up to the top. Um, you can also refresh your feed by sort of pulling down and holding. You'll see that sort of um, refresh little circle up here as I'm pulling down. It doesn't have anything at the top of my feed, so it's just showing the same thing. Oh, there we go. There's an ad that looks like it's refreshed for Food Network. All right. Any questions so far? 
We're going to talk about liking and commenting next. No questions so far. Thanks, everyone. Um, my screen froze. So, <laughs> Do, are you doing okay now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I just had, I switched laptops for a moment. That's why you saw two two uh, Champagne Public Libraries in there. But we're good to go. So, uh, moving on. Okay, cool. All right. So let's talk about um, sort of the nitty gritty of interacting with posts. So down here underneath a post, you'll see some icons that are sort of similar to the stuff that we saw up at the top. So I have a heart, I have a little word bubble, and then I have a paper airplane sort of icon. That's what I like to call it because to me it looks like a paper airplane. And then you have a sort of what looks like a bookmark icon. So these icons are going to let you interact. If I tap on that heart button, that's going to like the post. So you see my likes just, that likes for that post just went up because my heart was activated. If I want to comment on a post, let me turn the brightness down just a little bit. If I want to comment on a post, I can tap on that little word bubble and then I can write my comment. I can also see what other people are commenting. So you can see other people are commenting on this post. And I can also add my emojis if I want to. I would just type in something here and then hit post if I wanted to comment. If I wanted to direct message this user, I could tap on that little paper airplane icon. And then actually, no, that's not a direct message. That's a send. Sorry, that's incorrect. This is if I wanted to send this post to somebody. So maybe I wanted to send it to Muhammad's library and say that I really enjoyed this post. I could do that. Now it would send it to them as a direct message, but it's not creating a direct message with that user just to differentiate that. I can also save the post over here if I click on that little bookmark icon. If I tap on that, that's now gone to my saved posts. And I'll show you where those will be once we go to our profile. Sometimes I use saved posts to sort of bookmark things. Like sometimes I see a recipe on Instagram that I really like and I want to save for later. Or I have maybe like a, something that's inspiring me, maybe to make a piece of art or maybe to take pictures of something myself. Um, I'll, I'll save it for later and maybe take a look at it later and do something with it. You can use bookmarks for any reason. Um, I like it to just kind of visit, revisit the post later without having to dig through all of my feed. Um, we'll talk about, again, we'll talk about how to access your saved posts once we get to the profile. Um, you'll also notice, let me go back down to a post here, that underneath the photo is how many likes it has. And it does have a little blurb that the user has written about the post. Let me see here. So it looks like National Geographic has written um, quite a bit about the caption for this photo. And it says I can add a comment here as well. So I don't necessarily have to tap that word bubble to get to comments. I can just go kind of to the bottom of the post and add a comment from there as well. You can also like a post by double tapping on it. You don't have to tap on that heart. So let me double tap on this one here. So I'm just going tap, tap, and that's liking it. You kind of saw how that heart came up. Let me do it for another one. Tap, tap. There we go. So you saw that heart there in the middle, and it liked it. So that is how to like and comment. Anybody have questions about that so far? No questions so far. All right. Let's talk about how to create a post. So we're on our home page. And let me go ahead and refresh here so we get at the top of our post. So up at the top right corner again is going to be how we create a post. If I tap on the plus button, I have a couple of options here. So it's going to let me either create a post, a story, a reel, or a live video. So you kind of see as I move through this bottom right menu here, I can select which of those I want. 
So do I want to create a post? Do I want to create a story? Do I want to create a reel? Or do I want to create a live video? And you'll see it kind of changes as I move through those menus. We'll talk about more what a story is um, in just a second. But let's go ahead and let's do a post since we're on a post. And it's going to ask us if we want to sort of use what's in our reel of photos on our phone or if we want to use like a brand new picture that we can take from right here. So that you'll see over here on the right side, the little square that would be accessing your photo library on your phone. Or I can tap on the camera and that will open up my camera and I can just take a picture right there and post it right from the Instagram app. It's kind of convenient in that way and you don't have to exit out of your Instagram app to create a post. Some people, you know, they have to exit out of the app and they go into their camera, take a picture and then go back to the Instagram app. They kind of made it like a one step thing just by hitting that camera there. Um, basically, yeah, you would select your photo. So let's select something. If we did some 3D images recently, so it looks like there's a bunch down here that we can maybe use here. Let's see. Let's do that one. Uh, actually, I want something that looks maybe from Teen Space. Let's see. All right, let's do one of Teen Space. So again, I'm selecting something from my photo library that's on my phone. And then up at the top here, you'll see it says new post. So that's how I knew I'm doing a new post. And then I hit next. Let's hit next. Okay. And then it's going to allow me to do a couple things. It's going to allow me to add a filter or I can edit the photo. So filters, you, you may have heard of a filter before. That's sort of a preset. Um, it's like a preset edit that you can place over your photo. Uh, Instagram has a number of filters that you can use. And it sort of gives a different look. So you may sort of filter through those and see how your photo looks as you switch between them. Um, sometimes you can do like a black and white one. Let's see if we can find a black and white one here. So that looks like a black and white one. I like the colors a lot though. So let's do, an, and you can also just do no filter as well. If you hit normal, that will do no filter. You don't have to do this. Um, you can also hit edit, which will allow you to change things like your brightness, your contrast. You can change your saturation. All of these things will kind of let you edit your photo right in the Instagram app. Once you're done figuring out all your edits, up at the top, you're going to hit next. And then it's going to allow you to do a couple things before you post it. So it's going to let you write a caption. So maybe you want to describe your picture here. We love teen space. So I can write in my caption there. Let's see if I wanted to do anything else. I could tag people. So if I had maybe a person was in the photo and I wanted to tag them, they may have an Instagram account. We can tag them. I don't have any people in here, but maybe we could tag Champaign Public Library. Let's type in Champaign. So I'm just typing in Champaign Public Library. Oops. I'm going to tap on our. Yeah, so we can tag ourselves in that one. We'll hit done. So we've got Champaign Public Library tagged. We can also add a location. So maybe we do, let's do Champaign since we already did our library. And then we can also decide if we wanted to post it to other accounts. So you can post it to Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr. Um, that's kind of a more convenient way. You don't have to craft a new one in the other apps. You can just post it simultaneously from Instagram to these other apps if you would like. Now, keep in mind, if you don't have your Facebook linked with your Instagram, it's probably going to prompt you to log in. Same with Twitter and Tumblr. Once I'm ready to share, I can hit that share button. And now this is going to go on to my Instagram page and it's going to show up in the feed. Um, and anybody that follows me will be able to see this picture as well. 
And of course, they can comment on it, like it, bookmark it, etc. Any questions about creating a new post? No questions so far. All right. I would add also that um, a question for me, uh, what kind of content do you see people post most often? Um, it depends on what you follow, really. Um, I follow a lot of animal accounts. Of course, I love cats and dogs and all types of animals, really. So you'll probably see cats and stuff on my Instagram. But, you know, a lot of people post like travel photos, People post food photos. Uh, you'll see a lot of sort of everyday life kind of stuff. Um, people take fashion photography, architecture photography, really anything. It looks like National Geographic has nature stuff up. You'll see a lot of nature stuff. Um, you may have heard of the sort of people going out to sites and they're doing it for Instagram. So they're getting their picture. They're going to these places and going to just take pictures for their Instagram. Um, so some places may be more crowded than they used to be just because people want to get them onto the internet. We do it's have the a day question. and age we live in. Yeah. We do have a question about, um, linking a business Facebook page to Instagram. Um, I'm assuming you would probably do it the same way you would link your, I mean, you could link the two things together as long as your yes. business Facebook is separate from say a personal Facebook account, um, right. that you could create an Instagram profile specifically for your business. Yes, exactly. That's it what is, I would. Sorry. I was just going to say our, um, our business librarian, Madeline, um, does teach a class in, or at least she is hosting a class in, um, leveraging Instagram for your business. Um, pretty soon here. I think it's, um, I can check, I'll check what, what date it is, but that might be. Yeah. Let me write that one into. down and we can follow up on that one. Yeah. I'll look it up right now for you and let you know. But yes, um, you'll, you'll see a lot of businesses on Instagram for sure. Like a lot of people have like maybe their shops, their online shops have their own Instagram um, and they'll link sort of their other social media, including Facebook to that Instagram just because they want to get themselves out there. Um, so you'll definitely see a lot of people connecting their different accounts together. Um, and of course, Instagram is one of those that they can connect to. But yeah, um, we'll follow up more on that on that date. I'm, Su I'm sure Susan's looking that up right now. Yes, yep. I'll respond to you directly in the chat. All right. So let's go back to the top of our homepage here. And let's talk about stories. So we talked about posting, but we didn't talk about what stories are. So stories are photos or, vi or videos that vanish after 24 hours. Stories will appear above your feed. So they'll appear right up here, all of these circles here. And as we scroll through, oops, these are all accounts that have had stories posted within the last 24 hours that we follow. So all the people you follow, if they have stories, they'll come right up here at the top of your feed on your homepage. And it's sort of like if you've ever heard of Snapchat before, um, Snapchat is another social media app and it's mostly based around uh, photos or videos that will vanish after 24 hours. Um, so some people kind of like to use their stories as uh, a way to quickly share what's going on, maybe in their day to day or um, sort of just as a quick way to get out content without posting to their feed. So stories do not end up in your feed as you scroll through this way. They are up here at the top. And you can tell when an account has a new story if they have this ring around their profile picture. So you'll see either a pink or a green ring. We'll talk about the difference as well if they have a new story. So for us, if we want to create a new story, we can either hit that plus button here and then we would select story or we can just hit that plus button right here and create a story right from there. Now, again, it can be either a photo or a video. Um, it's up to you. And you can take the photo or video within the app, or you can upload whatever is in your photo library. So let's actually look at a story so you can kind of see what it's all about. 
So again, I can scroll over and select the story I want to see just by tapping on that little circle there. So let's see what Rick Steves Europe has got for their story today. All I do is tap it. And you'll notice up at the top, there's sort of a line that's sort of bisected. Those are the number of stories that have been posted in the last 24 hours. And they're going to go... Um, they're just going to go on their own here. Once I tap a story that's going to play on its own, I can move forward or backward within a story by just tapping on the left or right side of the screen. So if I want to go back, I can tap and that will go back to the previous stories. Or I can skip forward by tapping on the right side. And you'll notice up at the top here, it says 20 hours. So this story was posted 20 hours ago on Rick Steve's page. Now, if I wanted to actually pause this story and read what all of this is here, because again, it's going to keep moving on its own, right? I can't stop it unless I do something. I can actually tap and hold down, and that will let me look at the story and sort of pause it. If I wanted to start playing again, I just lift up my finger. Oh, that person is tagged in that story, so that's why that little thing came up. But sometimes, yeah, you'll notice that as you sort of tap in, there may be a tag. Let's see. Looks like this person was tagged on this story. Um, sometimes people can add their posts to a story. I'll show you how to do that as well. But yeah, stories are kind of a quick way to sort of just see what everybody has going on. Um, you can also flip through stories um, through different accounts by sort of swiping like that swiping to the left, that will swipe through the different users that you follow. It will swipe through all of the stories. So you'll see this is the Library of Congress's stories. But if I swipe, I've now gotten to the U of I's stories. And again, these are all the people I follow or sponsored. So you'll see sponsored stories in there. We follow the Los Angeles Public Library as well. So yeah, I sort of recommend just kind of tapping around, playing around with the stories and just see how they operate. A lot of it involves gesturing, so keep that in mind. A lot of social media nowadays is all about the gestures. So it's either tapping, swiping, holding down, letting go. So it's good to kind of use um, exploring Instagram as a way to practice those, um, especially with stories. Does anybody have questions about stories? None that I see at the moment. All right. Um, as I was saying earlier, a new story will have a pink or a green ring. So the pink ring means the story is available to everyone. It's not restricted. If it's a green ring, that means you are part of somebody's close friends. So close friends is a feature that Instagram uses that lets users create a separate list of followers and it grants them special viewing permissions. So you can actually curate that list to go to certain people and only those people on that list can see that story. So it's sort of a kind of a way to restrict who sees what. Um, I know a couple of people have uh, shared stuff on their stories that involve their children, and they don't want that to go out to the wider public of Instagram. So they have a list of close friends that can see the stories that they share with their kids. Um, it's kind of a good way to keep it a little bit more private. Um, you don't have to share it publicly. Keep that in mind. Um, now, if you wanted to create a list of your close friends, um, we're going to talk about how to do that when we go to the profile. There is a way to curate that list. Let's also talk about Reels. We're not going to go into Reels um, for more than just a couple of minutes here just because it's a pretty in-depth sort of feature of Instagram. Now, I can always send you some information later if you're interested in Reels. But let's touch on that just briefly. Um, again, that's going to be you're going to tap on that little sort of clapper icon at the center bottom of your screen. And it's going to take you into Reels. 
So reels are videos up to 30 seconds in length that can have sound effects, music, um, or other effects added to it. So again, it's sort of like your feed. You're going to scroll up to see um, the different people. Now, reels will include the people you follow, but also people that Instagram thinks that you want to see. So you may see stuff on here that is not interesting to you or not relevant to your interests. But the more you watch the reels, the more they're sort of catered to what your interests are, um, especially depending on how long you watch a video or if you interact by liking or commenting on a video. Um, a lot of it has to do with just your interactions. And of course, we got a little cute puppy dog right there. He's very cute. So um, Rebecca, Rebecca yeah. I have a quick question for you. Sure. Um, how would you find people, say, that you know in real life? Um, would they have to give you their Instagram name? Um, would they possibly be using something different than their real name? Yes, that is possible. Let me go back home here. Um, so all of Instagram users will have a username that's unique to them. So PBS has their Instagram set up as PBS. Let's keep going here and see. So National Geographic Travel, that's their username here. Um, if you know somebody on Instagram, you can search for their name. Or if you know their username, you can search for their username. I believe there is also a way where you can set up the contacts in your phone to sort of trace and see if anybody's phone number is cross-referenced in Instagram. And it can check and see if they have an account that you can follow. I believe it also works if you've set up your Instagram to have your Facebook credentials because it will check if any of your Facebook friends are also on Instagram. I think we can revisit that one once we go to profile or your settings because you can look and see what the suggested friends to follow are. Perfect. We'll talk Thank about that more in a second. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I hope that helped answer their question. And I should also say that their username may be totally different from their real name. Um, it's just something that they've come up with and that they decided they want to use for their Instagram username. Um, a lot of people will have their um, username the same just because they want to find have people find them, but other people, it may be something totally different. And a lot of times you might find that if you visit somebody's profile, you'll see both their um, Instagram name and their real name. Let's see if we can go to Nat Geo here. So yes, yeah, so for instance, Nat Geo, um, this is their quote unquote real name. So National Geographic, and this up here is their username. So that's what they've decided they wanna go as for their handle. You may have also heard his username as, as referred to as handles. Let's see if we can uh, see any other like real people instead of a company here. We follow a lot of National Geographic stuff. They must have posted a lot recently. Let's see. So Rebecca, speaking of posts, uh -huh. um, we have a question from someone where one of the, the organizations that they follow um, mm -hmm. At the bottom, it said they could read further about something that's in a linked story. Mm -hmm. um, do you know how, how someone would find the more information about a linked post? Yeah. So if you visit the person's profile, let's go, for instance, to PBS's profile. So what I'm doing is I'm just tapping on their username. That will bring me right to their profile. I can tap it from up here or I can tap it from where it is underneath like the views and the comment section. And that's going to bring me to their profile. And um, sometimes people will have stuff linked here in their um, little biography section. So it looks like they have a link here, but you can also access their stories by tapping on their profile. So in that instance, for that question that somebody had, they said it was linked to their story. So what I would do is I would visit their profile and I would tap on their stories. And then I would see if I could find out that information from their stories. They may have a link. Sometimes a story may encourage you to swipe up. Let me see if this one has a swipe up. No. 
Sometimes people will add a link and um, it will have an option to swipe up from within the story and it will bump them out to their internet browser, which will then have the information. I'll try to see if we can find one that's got a swipe up. Let me see. Let me see if Nat Geo has one. Not that one. Let's see, New York Public Library. See, this one for New York Public Library has a link down here. See that kind of what looks like a chain, like a chain link? That's going to be linking you to this site here. So if I tap on that, I can tap visit link. And then it would bump me out to their website where then I could go and read about, it looks like they're doing no more late finds. Good for them. Um, sometimes it will also have a swipe up down here. It might say swipe up, which then you would swipe up and it would bring you to whatever information they had. Let me see if there's another website that may, let's see, Food Network. Do you have a swipe up? Nope, but they do have a link. No swipe ups. Sometimes it's hard to find the examples just because, you know, with stories, they change every 24 hours, so it's always shifting. Does that help answer your question? I can revisit that one as well and see if we can find another swipe up option later. Uh, uh, yes, yes, they may, may look, look at, at it later. later. Okay. All right, so let's talk about searching. Um, and again, everybody's... Uh, like Instagram or the way they interacted with it might be slightly different than what I'm showing here, just because everybody's got their stories set up slightly differently. Um, when I say everybody, that means the users that you follow. So you may be seeing different stuff that, that are on the users you follow. Um, but let's talk about searching because searching is a super important part of Instagram because how else do we find people we want to follow or stuff we're interested in? So let's tap on that search icon, which is, of course, our little magnifying glass. Let's hit that. And I did a search on Gordon Ramsay just because I was trying to, to find what the difference between the username and the actual name is. Um, so let me just exit out of that real quick. Let me go back to search. Okay. So if you tap on search, sort of the first thing that may come up is this um, sort of feed that looks like a bunch of either photos or videos and of course this is going to change depending on who you follow what your interests are what you're searching for what you're liking um, basically it's sort of an algorithm that instagram has that's going to churn out stuff that you may be interested in just so you can tap and like or comment or just spend time looking around their app um, it's also got a search bar up here where we can do specific searches. So we can search for users, we can search for friends, um, companies on Instagram, places. Um, you can also search for hashtags and we're gonna talk about hashtags in a little bit as well. So let's do a search just to show what that looks like. So I'm gonna tap on the search bar up here at the top and we're gonna do a search. Does anybody have any suggestions for a search? Otherwise, I can make one on my own. And it looks like Instagram is also flowing through some of these suggestions for searches. But I'm happy to take suggestions as well, if anybody has them. Well, you know that I'm going to suggest cats. <laughs> Let's search cats. That's the most internet-friendly search, probably. So you'll see as I'm searching, it will actually start populating some uh, what Instagram thinks the results I want to see. So I'll see accounts here. And I'm seeing all results. So I'm seeing accounts. I may be seeing um, hashtags, locations. Um, so if I just type cats and hit search, what's going to pop up? So again, we're going to see a tiled feed of cats, which is all of the results from Instagram. But we also have this menu up here, which is going to let us filter those results. So we're currently on this menu that kind of looks like uh, three lines here. That's all of our results. But if we click on the little person, 
that's going to show us different users on Instagram that have to do with cats, either their content, their username. Um, so for instance, cats of Instagram is a pretty popular one. Just accounts that have to do with cats. If I click on the little music note, that's going to be music. So these are songs that you can use in your reels. Reels have music playing over them. And you can search for music with that little filter here. I can also search for hashtags. So hashtags we'll talk about in just a second as well are sort of a way that people use to connect on Instagram. So if you wanted to search hashtags, you could also do that here. And I could tap on that and it would show me posts that contain that hashtag. So hashtag cats. So I have 129 million posts that include that cat's hashtag. So again, I could scroll through here and just see my results. I also have the option to follow that hashtag. So that means that I will see a few top posts of that hashtag within my feed. So again, my feed would be that scrolling list of stuff that I follow on my homepage. Um, sometimes people will also um, use hashtags as a way to get their photos out there. So you may see some pictures that don't have anything to do with cats that have the cat's hashtag. If I click recent, there's dogs in here. Why is there a dog in here? They just put that cat hashtag in their description just to get their photo seen. So sometimes you may see some stuff that's not relevant when you're doing a search for hashtags. The top is going to be the top results, which means it's going to be stuff that's been most commented on, most liked, and it has a lot of um, interactions. Recent would mean it's the most recently posted thing by anybody on Instagram. It could have one like, it could have one comment. Um, this guy's pretty cute. So this was posted 42 seconds ago. And it uses that hashtag cats. Let's see. Yep. Looks like they're using tons of hashtags in here. So let's actually talk a little bit more about hashtags. Oh, let me talk about this last one here. This one is locations. This is sort of an icon that some map icon or map apps use. So for instance, um, Google Maps. If you're looking for a location, it might have that little pinpoint icon. So that's kind of a way to tell that you're in the places. So it's like got, for instance, looks like Cat's Cradle location in uh, North Carolina. There's a place in Indiana. So I can tap on one of these. Let's see. Top Cats. What's that? Live music venue. So that's just a live music venue that's called Top Cats. Um, Cat's Cradle is probably another music venue. Yep. So these are locations. Sometimes it's actually really fun to do a location search if you're maybe going on vacation somewhere. I can do Grand Canyon. I can do a search and use that places. And then I can search the place here for Grand Canyon National Park. And then I can like see what some of the top posts were for people that were visiting the Grand Canyon. Um, I like to use that one if I'm going places and I just kind of want to see what's going on in that location. It's kind of a fun way to connect with people who are visiting um, and just see what's going on that day. Maybe it looks like two days ago, someone took a picture there and they have um, put their location as Grand, Grand Canyon National Park. So I kind of like to explore using that search option and just see what's out there. It's a fun way to search on Instagram. Any questions about searching? We'll talk about hashtags next. If you have any questions, please go ahead and... Oh, sorry. You're echoing there a little bit. Yeah, I had to jump on a different screen. Give me just a second. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, you're good. Having, Having a little bit, bit of trouble with Zoom today. No worries. All right, I'm just scrolling through to see if I can find any posts that have some hashtags that I can 
kind of use as my example. Here we go. So here's a post from National Geographic's travel account. And it looks like they have some hashtags down at the bottom of their description on their post. So hashtags are these words that are right um, next to this little hashtag icon. So you may have heard of hashtags when you talk about sites like Twitter. Um, Instagram uses them as well. It's basically sort of a way that you can connect and engage with other people on Instagram. So like you saw when we did our search, we can search for hashtags and that might help people get seen on Instagram or have their photos connected to certain locations or themes or pretty much anything. Like for instance, this person has a hashtag a GNC, hashtag Greece, nature, adventure. So they're kind of getting their pictures associated with all those sort of themes, right? So if I tap on one of these, I can actually see some of these other hashtags or some of these other posts that use that hashtag. There we go. So I used, uh, I just tapped on a GNC from their description and now I'm seeing other posts with that same hashtag, a very pretty hashtag, I should say. And again, I can follow that hashtag if I want stuff like that to appear in my feed. I can go back. I can also click on the Grease hashtag. Let's see what's on the Grease hashtag. Oh, we got some kitties. So yeah, I recommend kind of exploring some hashtags in people's um, descriptions. You can add hashtags to your description to sort of get your stuff out there, get it connected with other people. Um, there's no real, I would say, point to it except for engaging and connecting with people. It's just a social media thing. Um, and you might notice that some hashtags um, have nothing to do with the photo. So some people like to put a lot of hashtags in their posts just to get them seen, to get likes, to get comments, and to get popular, right? Because sometimes with these social media sites, they are sort of a popularity contest. So people use those hashtags as a way to sort of get their stuff out there. Whoa. So yeah, look at this one. It has a lot of stuff in their description. So and they're sure using lots. For leveraging business, for business purposes, leveraging a hashtag is probably a, a good, um, a good strategy. And yes. Again, the um, uh, October 18th uh, webinar at 7 p.m., they'll discuss um, leveraging uh, Instagram for businesses. Yes. Um, it's actually a really fun way to connect to other similarly, um, like, similarly themed or, like, for instance, um, National Library Week is a hashtag. Let me search for that, actually. Um, that's a week that libraries use to sort of promote themselves. And we do a lot of activities, a lot of programs. And um, a lot of libraries use that hashtag as a way to sort of get out what they're doing. And it's sort of a fun way that other libraries can connect to each other and to their library users and, you know, just to make a sort of connection. Um, so it looks like National Library Week's um, hashtag has quite a lot of stuff. So it's kind of a fun way to promote themselves or to get out what they're doing for their own programming. And usually that's in April, I believe. So yeah, you can do a ton of stuff with hashtags. It's not um, just one thing. Any questions so far about hashtags? I don't see any questions at the moment. All right. So we talked about almost all of these down here. Let's talk about the profile photo. Let me lower that lighting a little bit. Oop, other way. So let's talk about our profile page. So again, yours is going to look a little different because you're going to have a different profile picture than us. But let's tap on our profile. So that's that bottom right. Let me make that a little brighter here. Come on. There we go. So if I tap on my profile um, little picture from the bottom menu there, it's going to take me to my 
my profile page. And from here, I can see a couple things. I can see my, um, my handle or my Instagram username. I also see what name we've decided to use as our real name or just the name that we've decided to go as for our account. We'll also see our description here. So if you have your own Instagram, you can add a little description, maybe about yourself or you know what kind of vibe you're going for for your Instagram. We also have a little link here. So some people add links into their Instagram profile description. I can also edit my profile from here as well. So if I wanted to do something like change my profile picture, um, I can add a website, change my biography. I can switch to a professional account as well. I'm sure they'll go over that when Madeline does her webinar. But professional account is useful for maybe if you're using it for your business or something like that. I can also go into some of my settings for my personal info. Um, but yeah, if I wanted to change my profile picture, all I would need to do is just tap on change profile picture. And then I can decide where I want to grab that picture from and then have that on my Instagram. You'll also notice here it says name and username. Again, that username is going to be that handle that you'll see um, as you scroll through your feed. And the name would be maybe your real name or what you want to go by under that category. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be your real name. It's the internet. You can make it whatever you want. Um, and once you're done, of course, you can hit done. And then it will bring you back to your profile page. And I can do a couple things up here too. I can create from this button. So I can create a post, real story, and these other things here. I can also get into my settings from here. So if I wanted to change some of my privacy settings um, or just some general settings, I can hit that button and then hit settings and then go into maybe my notification settings, privacy security, account settings. And you'll also see there's some information about Facebook down here. So you can change some of that info here. So follow and invite friends. I think that was sort of the thing we touched on earlier, that if you're looking for people, you can go to that and you can follow contacts. So that would draw those contacts from your phone. You can also, I think, add people by texting them. I don't know what this one is. I think this is a newer one. Okay, it looks like it's going to let me do a couple of other things based on my device. But I encourage you to check out settings and you know, just explore what is out there because sometimes you're, you know, you're not sure what you can actually do or not do. Um, I encourage you to check that out. We'll talk a little bit more about settings later, but you can access that from your profile. You'll also see this discover people. So this is sort of some people that Instagram thinks you may want to follow. It may also show friends that you have in common with some other people that you follow. You'll also see down here, these are my posts that I've posted to our um, Instagram. So these would be things that would show up in the feed. And then when you visit someone's profile, this would be their posts. If I tap on this other button over here, it kind of looks like a person. That's going to be the post that I've been tagged in. So for instance, maybe I had a group picture that I was in and somebody tagged me in a group picture. That would show up if I tap that button here that would show up in posts down here. I'm not currently tagged in anything. That's why nothing's showing up. But if someone's tagged you in a photo, you'll be in, in this tagged photos here. So well, let's actually look at Champagne Public Library, like our official account and see if anybody's tagged. So of course they've got all of their posts here on this one, but if we go to tagged posts, let's see. So these are all the photos that we've been tagged in, that our official Instagram has been tagged in. So these are other users tagging our library. So it looks like we're tagged. Yep, they've tagged a couple other people here too as well. So all I did to see who was tagged in the photo is just tap on the photo once and it pulls up all the tags that people have added. That the user, I should say, the user has posted to their own personal post. 
Any questions about the profile page? No questions so far. You'll also see up at the top of your profile some more information about how many people you're following and how many people are following you, as well as the number of posts that are on your page. So the sort of the difference between following and followers is that the followers um, is the people that follow you. So the people who have decided to follow your account and have your posts show up in their feed. The people that are following are the people that you are following. So for instance, if I wanted to follow somebody, I would tap on that follow button maybe from here, or if I'm doing a search, I could search maybe for our library across town, Urbana Free Library, tap on their profile, and I could follow them and they would be added to my list of people I'm following. And it looks like Urbana's library has 1,709 followers. They're following 138 accounts. So again, the, these 138 accounts are the people that Urbana has decided to follow. The 1,709 are the people that are following Urbana. So they're seeing their posts come up in their feed, if that makes sense. Let me go back home here. Let's also talk about notifications because that's kind of an important thing. You'll want to be notified of certain things when you're on, let me make this a little darker here, when you're on Instagram. So once we're at our home page, we're going to go up to the top here to that heart icon. Let me tap on that. This is going to be our activity page. So this is where um, you'll see if somebody likes or comments on your page, you'll see a notification in this page. You'll see if you're mentioned in a comment. So for example, if someone, um, if you take a picture and someone comments on your photo and they may put in something, let's see if I can find one actually, if someone's mentioned somebody in a comment, let's see. Here we go. So for instance, if somebody has mentioned somebody in a comment, they'll put that little at sign in front of the com in front of the username. And that's sort of um, alerting the person that is being mentioned that they're in a comment or mentioned. Um, so for instance, you may, let's comment on a post. Uh, let's go to our webs, our page here. So maybe we wanted to write in a comment here and we said, great, great photo. And then I put the at sign and then I could put in, and as you'll see as I'm typing, it's going to allow me to select an account that I want to mention. And then if I post that, then it's going to alert the person that I've mentioned them in a comment. So they'll see that in their activity page. So sometimes people use that as sort of an attention grabber as a, hey, look over here, check this out. It's just another way to connect. Let me go back to that activity page here. You'll also notice that um, sometimes it encourages you to follow other accounts. Um, sometimes because they're similar to other users that you may follow or because Instagram thinks you may know them. Oh, sorry about that. You'll also see this follow request up here. So a follow request is going to happen when your account is private. Um, so we'll talk about that as well when we get into your settings, but you can make your account so that it's private and that people have to request to follow your account. So that means that the general public will not be able to see your photos. It will only be the people that you've allowed to follow you. So that does go back to our, our earlier questions uh, about some of the ways that you can um, keep your information more private. Yes. And we'll go into that when we go into a little bit more of the settings. But it's a really good way to sort of curate 
um, who sees your content. Because most, for the most part, if you're just creating an Instagram, all of your stuff is out there for anybody to see. If you wanted to make it more private, you'll you'll possibly want to think about making your account private. Um, and we can talk about that when we get to settings. But yes, if I wanted to allow this person to um, follow me, I could tap that and then I could either confirm that says, yes, I am okay with you seeing my stuff, or I could delete that request and they would know, they wouldn't be able to see anything that I posted. All right. You'll also be able to see if somebody tags you. Um, so for instance, somebody's maybe tagged you in a photo that might show up in your activity feed. Um, we don't have too much in here except for like follow, like follow this account, follow that account. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the stuff you'll see in your activity page. Let's also talk about blocking and muting and restricting, because that's sort of a safety measure you can take on Instagram. Um, now, blocking will let you um, sort of restrict somebody from seeing your posts, your profile, your story. Um, if you block somebody, they won't be able to see any of that. So they won't be able to see your posts. They won't be able to see your profile. They won't be able to see your story and they are not notified that you do that. So for instance, maybe someone's getting bullied on Instagram. They may block that person to help stop that from happening. Um, if someone's bothering you or trolling you or just generally being, um, you know, not nice, there's a harassment element, you can always block them. How do I block them? Good question. So there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, the first way I would suggest is to do a search and go to their profile. So maybe I knew who it was that I wanted to block. I could do a search. So maybe we want to, let's do, let's do Urbana Free Library, for instance. Let's block them. So what I've done is I've done a search. We're going to do a search for their library. Now, you don't have to follow somebody to block them. So I've done a search and I've tapped on their profile and now I'm at their profile. If I go up to the top right corner here where these three dots are, I'm going to tap on them. And then I have the option here to block them. If I hit block, it's going to... Um, give me an option. I can block Urbana Free Library and new accounts they may create, or I can just go ahead and block them individually. So I believe this is new here, new accounts they may create. So sometimes people will create um, multiple Instagram accounts and sort of link them. That may help you um, if they're trying to get around your block, they may create a new account to try to get to you. You can do this and that will sort of get all those connected accounts blocked as well. So you can decide and then you can hit block and then it's blocked them. Now, again, that's not going to notify them. They're not going to know that they're blocked. They're just not going to be able to see anything from you further. If you want to unblock them, you just tap unblock. Oop. Oop. Get back to that. There we go. Unblock. And now they are restored. So again, it's kind of a good way to shut down harassment and bullying, stuff like that on Instagram. There is another thing called muting. So muting will prevent another user's posts and stories from showing up in your feed without requiring you to unfollow them. So maybe I'm seeing a lot of stuff from a certain user that I don't really want to see in my feed but I want to keep them as part of my followers or people that are following me. I'm sorry. So what I can do, let's find an account here. Looks like we got some Minecraft stuff. These are some ads, I think. Let's mute an account. So how do I do that? So I can go to their profile either by searching or tapping on their name. I can tap those three icons or the three buttons icon up in the top. Actually, I think it's slightly different. Did they change this? They just updated some stuff on here. Let me see if I can find out how to do this. Is it restrict? 
Let me try a different account and see if I can find something else here. Hmm, maybe they took muting off. I'm going to have to look into that one. Let me write this down. Muting. Bear with me. I'm just going to see if muting is still a thing on Instagram. It looks like it says tap on the top of the feed, tap and hold the profile picture of the person whose story you'd like to mute. Oh, okay. So it seems like it's only with stories then? Looks like it's only with stories now. Okay. So they may have changed it. Mm -hmm. It used to be posts as well. It says, yeah, it says muting someone on Instagram means that their posts and stories will not appear in your feed, but you're still following them. Mm -hmm. That okay, was last I updated see. in August. So, Okay, so they did change it. See, that's the thing with technology, man. Sometimes you got to really keep up with them or you don't know what's going on. Okay, so. That's why, that's why we're here to help with, with, <laughs> exactly. the, uh, keep, with the keeping up part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can and attend it, these classes as many times as you want. <laughs> Yes, and it really helps as well to use their their help sites. So, like Susan, probably you probably went to their support page and looked that up. I absolutely did. So, I recommend if you ever have a question that we can't answer, to try their support page. So, let's try that again. Let me tap on. Yes. So it looks like I just tap. I did a tap and hold on their story icon, and then I have the option to mute them. Oh, okay. Here we go. So it's allowing me to mute either the story or mute story and posts. So it looks like it's still available for posts as well. It's just a different way to get to it, apparently. Okay. So that's how we mute. I'll change that so that um, it's updated on the slide. I was going to say, we'll update that in the handout before we send it out with the recording email. Yeah. Let me write that down. Something's always changing. All right, so you may have also seen when we visited, let's go back to Urbana's. I'm always using them as an example. So if I go to my three dot icon, I also have the option to restrict here. So that's slightly different than blocking. So restricting a user on Instagram means they won't be able to see when I'm online or if I've read their messages. So again, you can send messages to people. Um, their new comments on your post will only be visible to that person. So it will only be visible to them. It won't be visible to me. Um, and you can choose to see their comments. Um, it will give you the option whether or not you want to see it or you want to be able to have other people see it. Um, and you won't receive any notifications for future comments or interactions from that person. So it's sort of a way to kind of shut them down a little bit without completely blocking them and they can still follow your account they'll just have some restrictions on it um let me go back here did i cover the let me see i don't think i covered the direct messages so let's Not go yet. and do that since i was just talking about that let's go home so we just talked about activity page. Let's talk about direct messaging as well. So I'm going to tap on that bubble icon, the word bubble icon from the top right corner. This cat is distracting me. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tap on that word bubble. And then it's going to show a couple things here. So it's going to show me suggestions for people that I can start chats with. So people that I may follow. It's going to show me rooms. So this would be video chatting. I can video chat with people on Instagram. It's going to show me requests. So a request is a message request that somebody has sent me. My account is probably, I think we're marked as private right now. So people would have to request to message me. Those would show up in this message requests here. I can create a chat here by tapping this little sort of pen and paper icon, pencil and paper. Then I could create a new message to somebody. So maybe I wanted to send a private message to another user and just say, you know, you could talk, you could ask them questions. I mean, it's whatever you want to type in that chat. I should say that you should keep in mind that it is the internet. So people can screenshot things. Um, 
nothing is ever really 100% private on the internet. So just be careful. That's all I, I'm going to say about that. Um, use, be smart, use it wisely. You also have a little icon here where you can start a video chat. That's that kind of little camcorder icon. Looks kind of like a projector actually. And then you could start a video chat with somebody. These are sort of new features. Um, the video chat is at least, I think they're trying to catch up on that pandemic Zoom kind of thing. But that is direct messaging. And I believe you should be able to go from somebody's profile as well. If I wanted to message them, I could visit their profile and hit message. It looks like I also have the option to email them. Any questions so far? Uh, no questions that I can see so far. All right, let's talk about settings. So again, to get to your settings, you're going to go to your profile page. So I'm gonna hit my profile icon, and then I'm gonna go up here in the top right where those three lines are. Usually when you see the three lines or three dots, that's gonna be a menu that's gonna give you more options. So I'm gonna tap on that. And then I have my settings here. Before we jump into settings though, you'll also notice this saved. So this is where all of our saved posts, you'll probably remember me talking about that when we talked about interacting with the post. These were all of your saved posts go. So for instance, maybe you saved something that you wanted to look up later or read the description later or save the recipe for something. Um, I could go into my saved posts and then check those out from there. I kind of liken it to your bookmarking something to go back to. I usually do that for something I want to go back and look at later. Okay, but let's go to our settings. And here we're going to have a couple of options here. We can get into notification settings. So for instance, if we wanted to allow push notifications to our phone, um, if we want notifications from posts or likes or comments, so I can change how I'm getting notified about those from here. I encourage you to check that out and see what yours are and see if you like the way it is. You can always change it. Let me go back. If I go to privacy, that's going to allow me to change my account to private. Or I can change a couple of things here with my interactions as well. So it looks like we are currently marked as having a private account. So people have to ask to follow us. If I tap on that, that's going to turn my private account off. So it's asking me if I want to switch to a public account. And it's going to tell me what that means. So it's going to tell me that anyone will be able to see my photos and videos. Um, it won't change who is able to message me, tag me, or mention me. And pending requests, so follow requests, will be deleted. Uh, will be approved until I delete them. So I can decide if I want to do that or if I just want to not do that. I can kind of exit out of that menu. I should say if you started Instagram as a public account and you switched to private, all of the people that are currently following you are sort of grandfathered in. So keep that in mind when you switch to private, those people that are following you before are still going to be able to see your stuff. Um, going forward, people will have to ask to follow you, but the people that were following you before you switched over are going to be grandfathered in. So keep that in mind once you switch to private. You may want to go over who is following you and just see if you still want them there. So that's something to consider when you're doing that. Um, you also have the option to, let's see, uh, change some comment controls like blocking comments from certain people. You can decide who is able to mention you. So who is able to mention you in comments. So maybe I want to do people who only follow me, or maybe I don't want to be mentioned at all. I can hit no one. Rebecca, we have a question. Where was the push and what does it do? Yeah, let me go back. So that was under notifications, push notifications. That means that's going to push the notifications to your phone notifications. So instead of just being notified within the Instagram app, it's going to send notifications to your phone. So that means like even if you're not on Instagram, you will get notifications for 
whatever it is you have on through push notifications, if that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we can also change some security things here. Um, you can, of course, change your password, get information about your login activity. Um, this is helpful to maybe if someone is um, trying to hack into your account, you may be able to check your login activity and see if maybe something looks strange. You can also change two-factor authentication. I recommend that for the person who asked about hacking. Um, two-factor two authentication is really useful because that will give another sort of hurdle that person has to jump through. Um, Two-factor authentication may have you require um, you to put in a code uh, that only you know, maybe. Um, that way, that person not only has to know your password, but they also have to have that other factor to log in, if that makes sense. Uh, a lot of things are switching to two-factor authentication, especially with email. Um, I think Facebook has it. I know some uh, utilities have it. I know my my electric bill, I've switched to two-factor authentication. Just it's another step of privacy. Um, I recommend it if you're worried about that. And of course, you can see some data from some of your search history, um, your download information. I recommend going into those menus if you're interested in learning about those. You can also get into your account setting, um, so you can change some personal information. Um, you can see the posts you've liked. So any posts that I've personally liked with my account, I can see on here. So these are all the likes I've had. Um, but yeah, I recommend kind of exploring the settings in your free time if you're more curious. It also will bump you out to help. So if you're um, wanting to get into Instagram's help center, maybe you had a more specific question, you could sort of search and see what their topics are for, for help topics. Any sort of support site I really recommend from these apps, um, they're really useful for answering those more detailed questions. And of course you can log out from your settings as well. So maybe you're on a shared device, um, you can log out and that way you're not worried about someone else accessing. Any questions about settings? No questions that I see so far, but my screen just froze again. So if you have a question, um, feel free to go ahead and put it in the chat so that Rebecca will see it. Yes. Um, and we can continue from there. Okay. If anybody wants me to demonstrate something, I can do that too. I'm going to switch back over to my PowerPoint if anybody um, wants to ask any questions. They can also raise their hand. Again, I'm happy to show something over again if you're wanting to see a demonstration. All right. So I'm going to just switch over to my PowerPoint here, and we'll talk about some terms and phrases before we wrap up. So let's see. I hope you're seeing my PowerPoint presentation there. I am not, but if others can go ahead and put in the chat whether or not they see it. Um, I'm flipping through it right now because, of course, it doesn't want to go where I want it to go. It wants to go where it wants to go. <laughs> And my Zoom is is unhappy, so. I'm sorry about your Zoom. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I just might try to uh, jump out and jump back in um, now that we have most of what we need. Um, if others, I don't know if you can see, Rebecca, if others are posting in the chat. Yes, I do see a question. So someone's asking, how do I log out? Let me show that again. Okay. So if you're seeing my Instagram here, what I'm going to do to log out is I'm going to visit my profile, hit my profile page. I'm going to come up here to the top menu, those three lines. It's a lot of menus. So then I'm going to hit settings. And then I'm going to scroll down and hit log out. Now, I recommend that you um, log out if you're on a shared device. But if you're not, 
if you're just using your own phone or your own tablet and no one really uses it besides you, you don't necessarily have to log out. Um, I don't log out of mine every time I use it. I just keep it open, but it's up to you. So that's how you log out. And I will put that in the questions to go out as well in the email. Does that help answer your question about logging out? I think so. Okay, cool. All right, let me switch back to the PowerPoint here. Okay, so we're talking about terms and phrases. Now we talked a lot about some of these when we were doing our demonstration, but I'll go over some again. Um, so username and handle, we talked about that a little bit. That is the name that a person on Instagram decides to um, use to define their profile address. So that would be someone that um, they want to use that so that people can search that. I can search a username for somebody and that will pop up with their profile. And again, it may not relate to their actual name. Their username is different than their name on Instagram. Um, and it could be anything. So your name might be John Smith and your username could be Purple Unicorn 3. <laughs> it could be whatever you want. That's kind of what the internet's about. It's a little bit of anonymity. Um, and you may have also heard of it called a handle. Um, so username and handle kind of interchangeable. We talked about direct messaging. So again, that's a private message between two or more users on a social media network. Um, we talked about it, of course, with Instagram, but you can also direct message people on Twitter, on Facebook. <clears throat> Most social media sites have a direct message component. And again, keep in mind that private may not be 100% private because, of course, people could take a picture, take a screenshot, copy, paste. Keep that in mind. It may not be 100% private. So be careful. We talked about hashtags as well, and hashtag is that little symbol that's added to the beginning of a word or phrase on social media networks. With Instagram, the hashtag is clickable and searchable, as we saw with our demonstrations. And I should also say that when you're doing a hashtag, you want to make sure that if you're doing a phrase of more than one word, you're not putting in any spaces. Mm -hmm. A space will separate the hashtag, um, so keep that in mind. We talked about Instagram stories as well. That is a specific type of Instagram post that will vanish after 24 hours. Um, so it's sort of a quick way to get out some posts that you may not want to have on your feed. You may have heard of something called a meme before. So that's sort of a humorous picture or video that a lot of people have shared online. And sometimes it is rapidly shared because it's constantly changing or adjusting. So you may have seen pictures that may have the word changed slightly or the image changed slightly and then shared over and over again. That is called a meme. It's a pretty popular internet thing. We also talked about mentioning someone, but it's also referred to as adding someone, adding as an A-T. So that's using the at symbol in front of somebody's social media username in order to get their attention or to mention them. You can also refer to it as tagging. Now we talked about tagging as in like tagging somebody in a picture, but you can also do that in a comment. You may have heard of trolling. Um, trolling is an internet thing. So someone who may be deliberately, deliberately trying to start quarrels with people or just posting inflammatory stuff, maybe off-topic messages, something that makes no sense. Trolling is just a way that people like to harass people on the internet, essentially. And that's what blocking is for. So definitely take, take use of the blocking service, um, if necessary, to stop the trolls. You may have also heard of spam or spamming. So those are usually unsolicited messages sent to a large number of people. Um, it could be posted to comments. It could be likes, spam likes, spam messages, spam posts. Usually it's stuff that has no context. Um, we recently had, last year we had that, um, 
we had the uh, webinar that was the witchcraft, which we had a lot of spam happen during that. We had a lot of spam comments that were trying to solicit people to click links to fish, do phishing scams. So keep in mind that if you're seeing a lot of stuff that just doesn't make sense, or it's just a lot of stuff that is maybe trying to get you to click on stuff, that may be spamming. Um, we also talked about filters. So those were features that allow you to edit your photos or videos by applying those preset edits. So again, you could filter, do filters when you're making a post. Maybe you want to make it a black and white picture. You could put a black and white filter on there. We didn't talk about the verified badge, but you may have seen on Instagram, if you've seen a user, um, they may have a little blue check that's right next to their username. And that is Instagram's way of verifying their account. So that means that their account is um, confirmed to be authentic. So that means that that person is who they say they are. Um, this is especially useful for discerning public figures, celebrities, or brands. There are a lot of fake accounts out there, people trying to pretend to be other people. If you see that verified badge, that means you know that person has been verified by Instagram to be the correct person. So you may see it a lot with celebrities um, or with like uh, public figures, stuff like that. Any questions about terms and phrases? Let me just check the chat real quick. I don't see okay. any. Yeah, I don't see any either. I'm, I'm back in. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I, I'm jumping around a little bit here. <laughs> We're right in the wave. That's yep. okay. All right. So we also have stuff coming up. Um, so next week, I am going to be teaching intro to iPhones and iPads. So we're going to talk about some basics. Maybe you're new to your iPhone or iPad, or you're interested in buying one. I recommend you take that class. I really enjoy teaching it. I think it's one of the most fun to teach because I'm a big Apple person. And I also love recent, it. recent updates to yes. the operating systems means um, it might be a good refresher too. Yes. Then the following week, we're going to have intro to Android phones and tablets, sort of the same idea we're going to have if you're new to Android, um, you can take that class. Or if you're interested in buying Android or just if you want to know more about your device, take those classes. Um, and then the following week, we're going to do getting to know Kindles. So if you're interested in buying a Kindle or interested in learning more about your device, you can take that class. And then I think we have one more slide here with my info on it. Come on. Come on, PowerPoint. There we go. <laughs> so you'll see my email there. Feel free to reach out. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions after class or basically anytime you have them, feel free to reach out. I also have my phone number there. Um, Susan, if you want to post yours in the chat as well. And I'll do yours as well. Um, but yeah, we're super open to any questions you have. Don't feel like you're bothering us or you're asking a dumb question because we're here to answer those, right? Don't feel like you're, um, you know, out of the ordinary for having a question about your device or about, you know, the internet as a whole or any of these apps that we cover. Sure. And if we, we are here. If we are unable to answer the question too, we will try to help you find a resource of someone locally or um, elsewhere that can answer the questions for you. Yes. And of course, if you um, lose our contact information, you can always call the library. You can always email the library and, you know, we'll follow up with the appropriate person that can answer that question. Um, so even if you lose our contact information, anybody here at the library is wonderful and helpful. Absolutely. Um, let's see, there should be one more slide here. Yes. We also have book a librarian sessions. So if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one help, you can schedule sort of a session with one of our experts. So that would be Susan or me or another staff member would meet one-on-one -on -one with you to go over your questions. So that could be a question about computers. That could be a question about Instagram or library resources or anything really. Um, and yeah, you can sign up for one of those uh, on champagne.org slash book a librarian. You can also email us as well or call. Anyway, 
And I think that's pretty much it, unless anybody has um, any other questions, or I can demonstrate something again as well. I got my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check the chat here. Okay. Yeah, I don't see anything else in chat yet. But it's been it's been dropping my connection a little bit, so <laughs> I kind of hope that. <laughs> Let me see if I can start my video again over here. There you Hi, go. Everyone. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a second laptop. <laughs> I'm glad you got the backup. Yes, that yeah, is one of the big things, things about. Oh, let me go ahead and make sure I'm muted over here. If I can, um, that is one important thing about working with technology is having a good a good backup plan. <laughs> yes. All right. And I'm glad that I'm glad it was smooth. It was hopefully very smooth for everyone else. So, <laughs> best thing is if no one realizes that stuff's happening in the background, <laughs> then we've done our job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Until I say something like, "Oh, something's happening in the background," <laughs> like it was. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions, but, you know, after class, feel free to reach out if you find yourself having any. Yeah, let us know. All right. I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everybody. Hopefully we'll see you all next week. Thank you for tuning into CUI's TV. We hope you enjoyed the show. This video can be accessed anytime on youtube.com. In the YouTube search bar, type in UPTV6 and look for their microphone logo. We hope you will join us again next week for more local, engaging content designed specifically for Champaign County older adults. Take care and stay safe.